the jacks, the blade, the muscles, the fade, the super body body. Yeah, that's how we play. Oh, yeah, uh, here with yeah. KT, ripping yeah, our stuff that's like me. TTG. Oh, uh. I can't believe I'm black and can't <laughs> rap. I haven't done this in years. But welcome to the Weird Flex and OK Podcast. It's the Weird Flex, but OK Podcast. But yeah. Dude, you should have. You need to bounce it, Katie. You got to bounce the beat. You gotta I just be- get in with you. Dude, you don't all, have to get in with me. You're like a better freestyler than me. At least I can play oh basketball. Because when I edit this together, it's not going to really go oh, well, amazingly it doesn't matter. with the It rhythm. wasn't going with the beat. But it's perfect because you were, you were passionate. I was really feeling it. And guys, that's what this podcast is all about. Welcome to the... Weird Flex! But okay, podcast! And that was yeah. a beautiful intro. Maybe next time I'll jump in because I, I wanted you to have your moment, Jordan. I wanted you to shine. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's sure. What I I'll that, be better next week. Be. I'll practice yes. it. Yes. It'll be amazing. Oh, good. But yeah, welcome to our podcast. This is the Comedy Weebs Workout and Advice Podcast where we answer your questions. And happy All Black History you... Month. Yes, happy Black, Black History Month. Yeah. Yes. What These is that facts. supposed to mean? You said These happy History facts. Month. You just... You couldn't say, like, oh, no. happy black history. Wow, okay, Katie. I thought I, I did you. say it. Well, if I did not, that's on me. I was trying to give a <laughs> shout-out to our amazing <laughs> our amazing musician, uh, What's My Name, on Instagram and SoundCloud. He's also black. So happy yeah. Black History Month to him. Yes. Super awesome, Daniel. And, yeah, uh, heck, intros. Uh, Weird Flex, but you... okay podcast at gmail.com. Yes, yes, send us an email there if you want us to answer questions. We're off to a great start, clearly, and I hope that <laughs> for anybody that this is your first time listening, this is kind of what we're all about here. We're just here to have fun. We're here to to help people get through the week because it definitely helps me get through the week getting to do this, and I really hope you guys like it. And according to some of the emails you guys have been sending, you're you're kind of a fan, and you're getting some positivity out of this, and that's what I hope. That yeah. So we we'll hope continue. this makes your week a breeze. Because uh, they're fans. Get oh it. my God. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh. Got him. Dang it. You right. I thought we could get through this podcast without a pun. Oh. Clearly I was mistaken. No, yeah, I'm mistaken whatsoever. Well, well, Jordan, how was your week? Uh, It was okay. I've been watching this show, You, on Netflix. It's pretty good. Very intense. Uh, I got a new video released on my channel. It was good. I've been putting work into it. Uh, Sent over some stuff. Got Kingdom Hearts 3 after all these years. It was finally in my hand. And I was just like, yes. wow, after all these years, this is finally actually tangibly in my hand i've waited for this for so long and uh yeah, yeah i was i've uh, been playing it through i haven't finished it yet because i'm a busy man and uh i've been um working i uh, got rid of the my bed so i'm sleeping on the floor now because oh well i have a mattress so that's not really oh. true but it's like it, it makes more room because it's like i push a mattress up against the wall and i just yeah. pull it down when i want to go to sleep because my bed uh oh. that shit, it was just broken i had it for so many years it's just Broken. So, uh, yeah, but so far it's been pretty good. I went to the gym, lifted things up, put them down. Yay! Uh, did all my business stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's been pretty good so far. How about you, Miss Lynn Katie Johnson? Miss Lynn Katie Johnson. Miss Lynn oh, Katie yeah, it's Johnson. been pretty good. I've been watching Zach play a lot of Kingdom Hearts. And so that's been really cool, getting to, like, experience it a little bit. You never I played Kingdom a- Hearts growing up? Oh, I played the first game all the way through uh, a few years ago, but that was my first experience. And Mm -hmm. so, yeah, then I have no idea what happened in the second one, and now I am witnessing this one. So Yeah, yeah, and there's, like, a bunch of other ones that, like, you have to know (laughs) before this, like, it was so obscure. I've watched a few videos, and I'm still confused. No, no, no. I'm just living my best life. Yeah, exactly. No matter who you are, it's just, like, it's confusing. It's just confusing. (laughs) Yeah, it's been very entertaining trying to understand the lore, though, because I've watched countless videos trying to explain it, and it's still very not comprehensible for me. Mm -hmm. But if there's anybody out there that gets it, I congratulate you because it is truly stumped most of the internet it seems yeah it is and, it's one of those yeah. things like just play it for the disney characters that's all you need <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like because the... in the new one there's disney rides that are your special attacks oh yeah they are they're freaking and that awesome. was so cool mm-hmm. they're but yeah that cool. was one part of my week and then of course there's um there was heckin a breakfast party that i went to which was really fun and then i um i also booked two things uh that are really neat that maybe one day 
will be out there in the universe and I'll get money for, which are nice things. And I've been working a lot with my microphone uh, issues. Like my friend Kellen has been messaging me and helping me to try to figure some of the stuff out because I've been having some issues trying to figure out how to get my gain settings, how to get it to where the audio is like good audition quality and because I just got this upgrade. So it's been very frustrating. The life of a voice actor is a lot more tech than you would think. Did you say Kelden <laughs> or Kellen? Kellen. Because I was about to say, like, Kelden. Who, the guy oh. I was thinking of that, like, oh, no, 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 like, Kelden. name is A, starts with A. To the, but, <laughs> speaking of Kellen, it's his birthday today. Oh, happy birthday, Overhaul. Congrats. Yeah, happy birthday, Kellen, even though you probably don't listen to our podcast. But happy birthday. Well, then that's I a problem, that then. I take my I birthday thing it. back if you're not listening. Yeah, actually, you know what, Kellen? If you're not even going to listen to our podcast, why should we tell you happy birthday? Yeah, oh, because exactly. we're your friends. If you're listening to it, <laughs> happy birthday. If you're not, go eat your cake and get diabetes. Go eat your cake whatever. and go have a wonderful day, you splendiferous human being. The, f- the amount of fan art that Kellen gets is like, what? Mm-hmm. Like, cause, cause he's Kellen, and I was just like, oh heck, there's a lot of people that really like Kellen, and that's I get really fan nice. Art too. You do. That's true. Yeah. I think I've gotten like one piece of fan art in my life, and that's okay, cause I don't really need that. But it's like, it's cool to see it when it happens. Like the fact that somebody's inspired enough that they want to like draw that, like draw that thing that inspires them, which happens to be a person. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's freaking good. Like here, you know. Oh, did you see that fan art that uh, someone sent you on the freaking, um, what was it? On the Facebook page? Uh, no, I don't think I have. Oh, dude, I gotta link it. It's so good. Aww, I was like, it's so really adorable. Nice. Aw, heck. Well, I will, I will check that out real quick. And then we can yeah. get to some questions. Because today's questions are going to be super fun and super chill. Like, we're just going to have a really nice time today. Yep. That is a fan. <laughs> it's art. Of a fan. <laughs> you. <laughs> you baka. How dare you. <laughs> you have tricked me once too many times. I will have my revenge. Except for um, anybody at home that doesn't know what he just said. He just sent me a picture of literally a fan. <laughs> she has for fan art. Drawn, <laughs> and I am just. I'm so hurt, Jordan. I bet, honestly, I bet this is what everybody does. Uh, to This is what your actual fan art is. People sending you pictures. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody, if anybody out there is listening and is an artist, draw Jordan holding a fan. Draw us with fan art. Just draw us fan just, art. Come no, on. Draw, just draw Jordan holding a fan. That's all no, I need. No, draw both. No, draw what we just pre-inspired of me laughing at Katie being oh excited to look at art of a fan. <laughs> oh, my God. That um, would be... Also equally acceptable, but I just really want to have a picture of Jordan holding a fan that I can send him every time he makes a pun. (laughs) That's your biggest fan, Jordan? Yep. (laughs) Okay. That is is my dream. That is my goal to not take this away from me. Okay. All right. Whatever. I still say my my fan art idea is better. So there you go. I mean. Just draw us both as fans. (laughs) Yes. Oh, my God. Just draw a fan with freckles. I have a fan Sona. Oh, God. Oh, heck. Can I be a Japanese fan? Like, you know, like those katana ones? Where, oh, like, of they, course. That's yeah. what I imagined for you. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Like you'd be holding like one of those fans like up to your face, like like a geisha. What you call me? I'm straight. I, oh, I know. I, call, <laughs> I said you're a beautiful human being that I love and respect. Oh, uh, yeah. Got him. Oh, yeah. You right. You right. You left. You yeah, left I did me. leave. I did leave. You left me I all left this those conversation. years ago. Uh, <laughs> no, you're stuck with me on this podcast. We're trapped. Help. Help. Yeah, we We're like are. clawing, clawing out of the podcast. <laughs> Ridiculous. Redonkulous. Yes. Redraculous. I don't know. I'm running out of D words. Jordan, why don't you take us to our first question? Well, I'll give you the D because I have three Ds uh, right here for you. Uh, discipline. Diplomacy. <laughs> dedication. Those are my favorite Ds. Disaster Discord, baby. Okay. All right. This one comes from Gary Allen Hackett, and he says, What kind of teens were you in middle school slash high school? What were some defining memories from then for you too? Hmm. I know this. Yeah, I mean, middle school was more of like a middle school didn't happen (laughs) trauma. Uh, But in terms of like, yeah. But in terms of like, if I'm trying to look on the positive, 
Uh, defining moments in middle school, definitely when I was, um, when I first auditioned for a play that happened in middle school. Um, mm. and that was pretty cool. Like I had the confidence to like do an audition. I actually got it and that was really cool. Nice. It was, uh, Alice in Wonderland and I played Matilda who was Alice's older sister. And, um, yeah, that kind of sparked me doing more acting in high school and stuff. And then of course, going to conventions. Um, I had loved like anime and stuff when I was in elementary school. Cause I remember playing Yu-Gi-Oh <laughs> with people, but in middle school, I think was when I went to my first con. Cause I was like 12, I think 12 is when I was in middle school. I don't remember what age correlates to what grade, but, but yeah, mm -hmm. those were like some defining moments that have stuck with me. How are you and as a teenager? Like, what were you like as a teenager? Ooh. I was, was very it the same quiet. personality, or would you just like? Oh. I was not very extroverted in middle school. I was very quiet and nervous. What about high school? <laughs> uh, still pretty quiet and nervous, but I had a little bit more extroversion because I had gone to cons and I was doing theater, so I could talk to certain people in certain settings with confidence, but. But most of the time, like, during class and stuff, I would just be very, like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like, it was, the difference would be, like, I'd be very Hinata from Naruto when I'm at school. But then when I'm around the people that I like, I'm more, like, Naruto. I don't know. Yeah, I'm more like Naruto. I'm more like, yeah, mm -hmm. believe it. <laughs> so, like, were you that girl in, like, homeroom where you would just, like, read a manga book while waiting for a class to start? Like, since Oh, yeah. Homeroom? I always, I went to the library, like, uh, every other week or so because anime club. And so I would, um... Uh, I would always have, like, a volume with me of something because I didn't have cell phone back then. Mm -hmm. And um, even when other kids started having a cell phone, I would choose not to because I was like, I don't want a cell phone because all people – like, I was one of those kids, that, even though I'm addicted to social media now, so, like, what was the point? But mm -hmm. I was one of those kids that was like, no, I don't want to carry that around with me. I just want to – I want to talk to people, you know? Like, and this just fucking middle school, high school Katie just, like – with no idea of what was to come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. And so, yeah, I always had manga and stuff on me, and I would, like, be drawing, like, constantly doodling on everything. My drawing skills are not that great, but it made me feel good just, like, trying to. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And then whenever I would get home, when I first got a computer, I didn't have a cell phone yet, but I had a Facebook mm -hmm. when I was 14. And, uh, yeah, so my, my relationship with technology really started blossoming and in high school nice i guess but yeah cool that's those good. are my a few of my moments i guess <laughs> oh that's good cool. yeah what about you uh shit let's see how was i oh yeah before i had the stutter and shit like that i was Aww. just like quiet um uh, i think i was like yeah i was uh I was like a geek and I was lazy as fuck, man. Like I hated gym class. I was just like, oh, why do I fuck do we have to run a mile? Oh, this is yeah. just completely unnecessary. Like and I would like try to come up with excuses why I wouldn't yeah. have to run the mile. It's so funny because when I tell people that, they're like, no, shut up. And I was like, no, I'm serious. Like I would just make up excuses. Like um, I have asthma today. I really can't run the mile. I can't do it because I didn't want to yeah. do it. And uh. I hated physical activity. This is when I was chubby because, like, yeah, since he said middle school, that's when I started, like, um, I was obsessed with my PlayStation 2. I was obsessed yeah. with, like, watching TV. And I was obsessed with, like, Krispy Kreme donuts and Shasta soda. And I would just, like, drink uh -huh. it and play video games all weekend. And so, like, I was very, very, uh, I would say, you know, I was like you in the sense of like, I was introverted if I wasn't because like, you know, people made fun of my yeah. voice and stuff like that. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah, I'll talk to friends, but I'm not going to talk publicly. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. And then um, in <laughs> high school, I was, uh, uh, after I started weight training, I became like very uh, extroverted because like my friends like, oh, like bring me out places. And I think like the defining moment for me was uh, I went to like homecoming and I was like, I never wanted to go to high school dances. I just, I didn't want to, they dragged me to yeah. it. And then I went to homecoming and like, come on dad's Debo. Cause everyone from high school calls me Debo. And so I was like, come yeah. on dance. And so like, um, the, like, I remember that song. It was like, um, I'm two quarters in a hot down and I didn't want to forget how your voice sounds. These words yeah. are loud. So dance, dance. And I started playing and I just got on the dance floor and got in the dance oh. circle and just started going. And then it was just like, oh yeah, go Diva, go Diva. 
don't know. It's just like that, like lit the extrovert in me. So where like I just became like, yeah. oh yeah, I'm the confident extrovert now. I can play sports and do all that shit. So that was when old Jordan died and extrovert Jordan came out, and I was just like, yeah, Aww. yeah, that's good. So Yay. I was like, yeah, I like got rid of that other part of me, and then you know, whatever. Yeah, that's uh. the thing about, like, confidence. Like, there's a movie called Eighth Grade that uh, Bo Burnham directed and stuff, and it's really good. I saw it twice. And um, there's a quote in there that's, like, it seems so obvious, but hearing somebody else say it kind of puts it into perspective. It was essentially that at any given moment, you can choose confident. Confidence isn't something you necessarily have to, like, be born with or, like, you have to study the art of confidence if like suddenly a moment can occur where you just try to choose confidence and you kind of fake it and then it happens and then it's real and so I guess when I hear that moment about you choosing to be brave and go dance because it felt like something you wanted to do even though you might have been afraid because you might have been like oh well I'm not a confident person so I can't do that Mm -hmm. when like you can you can choose to to have that positivity and of course you know it'll it won't like just be a 100 percent part of you the minute you do something confident you know you'll still have insecurities but like taking that first step and acknowledging like that if if i feel confident in this moment i can do it and that's okay but if i have other moments where i'm not as confident that's also okay and like learning to kind of to to work through those yeah, one of and, my favorite. Uh, yeah. Oh no! Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Finish. No, no, no. That was it. <laughs> no, 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 like one of my favorite quotes on confidence is uh this quote I heard from uh, uh like I think a teacher or a friend of mine or something like that. I, I heard it a while ago in the past. It was always stuck with me, and it was like yeah. um, confident is walking into the room where you know like not everyone likes you and like realizing you don't care. Just like, oh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I'm just, like going in here and it's just like, you guys yeah. may not like me, but I like myself. And like, I'm not saying that in a douchey way, like, yeah, I fucked over a million people. I don't yeah, care. yeah, yeah. Like, but I'm saying like, it's just like some people just have a thing like they're envious or jealous or they just don't like you for whatever reason. And you walk in and you're like, yeah, I don't care. I'm here with my friends now. They care about me. So fuck off, whatever. You know, like that's that's what I try to have with my mentality. It's just like, they want to have the beef with me, whatever. Like I got the people I love yeah. and that's all that I care about. If you got If you want to talk, that just means you beneath me boy or girl or whatever come say it to my face honey yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and it's just like i'm not gonna do anything because i'm cool yeah yeah and so i won't have to worry about it but like that's my biggest thing is just i don't i don't worry about it i don't let stuff uh affect me like that just yeah I just you know chill especially in middle school when um it's such a very vulnerable time in your life like because throughout your life you'll have vulnerabilities but when you're really developing that skill of being able to like be social or figure out who you are, you'll have different stages of that throughout your life. But when mm-hmm. you're young, it can feel like everything is so big and important. But like when it comes to a lot of stuff that happened in middle school, I can barely remember. Like there are some highlights, but like, you know, you just keep going. And and like not that middle school doesn't necessarily matter, but it also doesn't matter. Like it's like weird. Like, do you get what it's I'm like saying? It's like high school, like, when people, like, say, like, oh, yeah, these are going to be, like, this is, like, the most important day of your life or something like that. And it's just, like, ten years later, oh, that, that shit, that was a long time ago. That still doesn't happen. Like, remember a permanent record? Oh, this is cool. Oh, like, yeah. A fucking permanent record. Record. If I do this, it's just, like, what the fuck even does that mean? What yeah, that yeah, is? Yeah. It's just, like, like, I'm 28 years old. I don't care about that shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I wish I would have thrown more basketballs at my exactly. teacher i don't know whatever exactly it's just like record. you threw a basketball at your teacher oh katie lynn that is going on your permanent record permanent black record marker i'm gonna get this black marker like, you remember that episode of hey arnold did you ever yes. watch hey arnold growing up where i was, he was about just, to say yeah, yeah. it was like he mooned like that person moon is like you do realize yeah. that your permanent record will follow you up until college and you still won't tell like, it's just like what wow the fuck? Yep. Uh, they did a good job at with some of those scare tactics, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I and remember those when are I other saw Hey Arnold things. as a kid, I thought fifth graders yeah. were going to be super jacked like that. I was just yeah. like, oh my God, I don't want to do, go deal with those fifth graders. They're that Dude, jacked. I remember watching Ned's, uh, Ned's Declassified School, school Survival, Survival Guide. Guide. Yes, yeah, and like was I was show. scared to go to high school because I was like, but Ned hasn't prepared me for high school. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I religiously watched that, that show. That show was and- like, so valid it would give it you like so good. good tips like if you want to do this make sure you leave out all your stuff in the morning 
thing and then like you'll be ready to go so you're ready to like leave out the door and i was like that is actually very valid or like when yeah. you like write this down and do that i was like that actually works that is solid advice ned yeah and that was girl mosby so was hot she oh was yeah mosby fun. yeah she was welcome fun. to mos <laughs> and then there was that one girl who was like like whatever she had like the freaking braces and glasses and stuff like that but yeah then, like she like had him taken off and she became like super cute and then like cookie liked her he's like oh, oh yeah, yeah i can't help it i'm shallow hmm. yeah oh man that was oh. a good show <clears throat> that was a good show coconut excuse me i burp it a is lot. okay i'm sorry it's okay i forgive you jordan speaking mm. of forgiveness i don't know segues uh next question i think i think it's, it's your time. question yes all right so uh, this comes from Mike Vogel, 66, on Instagram. It says, what was the first anime to make you feel emotional? So, so Jordan, uh, can you tell me any times you've ever felt emotion ever in the history of your life? Uh, Were they ever I, involved in anime? When I had anime? sex and I was happy. No, okay, so yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, when I had <laughs> sex with an anime doll and I was happy. No, okay, so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right, yeah. Even though I do come off cold, I, there are certain scenes that do get me. Like, for instance, there are certain tropes uh-huh. that get me every okay. time about like uh, like a family, like oh I have to say goodbye to my kid, or I have to like oh, um, yeah. sit, talk to oh, like this person is passing away and I can't do anything. So like for instance, uh, I can name three times like I cried. Like I'll, I'll, I'll bring up from three from each one, so six altogether. Okay. Um, in Dragon Ball, there's a scene where uh, Goku meets his uh, grandpa again and his grandpa he accidentally killed when he was a baby he accidentally turned into a great ape and stepped on him. yeah so like he was always looking for him because he never knew what happened to him so there's part where they meet up again he starts crying like i missed you i looked for you so much and like that freaking broke my heart uh Aww. and there was a scene where future trunks died in history of trunks in the original version that broke me as a kid i cried my eyes yeah. out because go home was my favorite i was just like no um and then there's a scene where goku says goodbye to goten where he has to go back to heaven because he's dead Aww. and it's just like it's so touching like just seeing like it's okay son his son's like crying like i don't want you to go dad he's just like hey it's okay take care of mom for me and then he like oh flies yeah off. and that's so like, essentially dragon ball and dragon ball z well yeah and then uh, and then um in naruto there are tons of things in naruto that made me cry oh, like yeah. for instance uh Minor when naruto. he first met his mom that destroyed me i cried oh, yeah. so hard when he met his his mother like the, the freaking monado thing that didn't get to me because he's like hey, he punched his dad his dad was like whatever but it's just like you know that like that shit made me cry or the yeah. scene where um uh he finally gets accepted by the village when he like yeah. uh he defeated pain and then like he goes back to the village and like if you've been following naruto for the entire time everyone's like looked at him like you're a piece of shit we don't like you go sit over there and this is the first time everyone was just waiting for him and cheering for him that shit yeah. oh my god that made me tear up bad like, that made me tear up really bad. But then, like, uh, other stuff, like, would have got me if I knew it. But, like, I remember when, spoiler alert, Neji died or whatever. I was just like, oh, I yeah. thought, I thought like, I didn't buy that he was dead. I was like, yeah. he's not dead. Because, like, during the pain arc, they literally brought back everyone they killed besides, you know, yeah. one person. We will say, But yeah. it's just like, oh, we'll try. <laughs> whatever. But they wouldn't. Uh. They brought back all these other people. But, like, I remember... Naruto had this way of killing people off, like, when Jiraiya died. I, I didn't yeah. buy that he was dead. I honestly yeah. didn't buy it because I remember reading in the manga. I was like, "He's not dead. He's not. He's gonna come back. Like whatever." Nope. They're like, "No, he's he's gone." I was like, "Well, it didn't feel like a final death to me, so it gave me no effect. Yeah. So I didn't yeah. make me cry." <laughs> With Naruto, that's where most of my emotional moments came from. I mean, a lot of the anime I watch, I'm pretty much a sucker. Like, if they try to get me emotional, it's probably gonna work because, like, a lot because I just relate to those characters so much. A lot mm-hmm. of the time, I let myself really seek into these, seep into these series, and try right. to establish that. And so, when the third Hokage died in Naruto, oh yeah, uh, during the battle with Orochimaru, I was watching it on TV like it's just a little kid, mm-hmm. and I started crying so hard because that was one of the first big anime deaths I had witnessed. Uh huh. And and like the way that they did it was so good with all the memories of like the, the um. The village hidden in the leaves, the fire of, uh, what was it, what did they call it? Like, what, the land of fire? Uh, yeah, it's the land of fire, but it's like the spirit of the fire or something is within you. Oh, okay. I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't remember, remember which one specifically. Yeah, I can't I remember what, it, what it's called, but like, essentially like, you know, the torch will be passed on and like, we all have the spirit of 
uh, it was like the spirit of the fire, whatever something in us. I'm sure somebody will know, and I can Google it later. Mm-hmm. But yeah, when when he died and like Konohamaru was missing him, and when Naruto was missing him, it broke me because mm-hmm. like that those are the kind of stories like when someone that you looked up to and has helped you and loved you, like when they leave, like that stuff breaks me. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. any story having to do with stuff like that and oh oh. But I've also had a lot of happy cry moments, like, oh my god. In One Piece, when Nami um, was like, Luffy, help me, I was crying. like. Well, reading? Yeah, I was reading, but that's, you know, it's still. It's still this kind of the same. Okay. And, yeah, those were two big, big moments I can think of. And, of course, there were... Um, there were the other ones, like, uh, or in High School Host Club has probably made me cry, too. Like, near the end of the anime, when um, when Tamaki and Haruhi, there was a situation going on, and Haruhi was finally able to be like, Tamaki, and they were able to make it work. I won't spoil it too much, but I, I cried during that. And Naruto had a lot more moments that made me cry. Like, oh, my God. When, uh, when Asuma... Um, died? Yeah, when Asuma died. And the way the anime specifically handled Shikamaru's depression after Asuma was gone because he was like a father figure to him and Shikamaru usually wasn't one to like go around displaying that kind of emotion Mm -hmm. like there was a scene where Shikamaru just screams out crying like he is just so distraught and I started bawling like oh my god it was it was hard seeing Shikamaru go through that Mm -hmm. yeah so stuff like that like scenes where there's just so much love shown and acceptance and like where people are willing to accept help like you mm-hmm. know with one piece and stuff and in Naruto those are that stuff that makes me cry but also just the losing of someone important to you also hits me in a in a way too and anime tends to do a good job at showcasing that right and i've been very emotional and grown a lot from those naruto especially has just made me cry a lot over the years cuz yeah. i had a very strong connection with that show yeah, I did. I mean, because like, I think Naruto, since, well, it was influenced by my favorite, Dragon Ball, so like that. Yeah. It's one of those things where you like you look at it, and uh, I, I guess like Dra- Dragon Ball spoiled a lot of shows for me, not in the sense like, oh, spoiler alert, but like uh, in, in the sense of like, oh, they're going to come back. Like, I don't have to worry. Like, they're going to come back from the dead. And then like, you know, spoilers, third Hokage did come back briefly. So it's just like, you know, yeah, that thing yeah. where it, it didn't affect me to the point where I'm just like, well, he'll be back. He'll be back. He ain't dead permanently. Like I said, this is a kid. Like, I, that, that's one of those things. I was yeah. always that person because I remember in theaters. Oh, here's a big one. I remember in theaters during the Pokemon the movie when um oh, Ash yeah. gets turned to stone and, yep. and the Pikachu's like crying and all the other things are crying. Like my friend oh, was yeah. crying in the theater and I looked at his ass. It's like, why are you crying? They showed on the TV the season two's coming. You know he's fine. <laughs> Shit like that. I was just oh. like, I just I didn't Honestly, understand it whatsoever. That's more how I am now. When it comes to certain things, like with like Inven- Avengers: Infinity War, like you know, was, sp- yeah, back. Tom Holland, like Spider Man dying, she's like, he got a movie coming out. Why are you guys yeah. crying? Oh yeah, no, like, Mister Stark, I can't go. It's just like he's not dead. Yeah, he kill him. Silly. Yeah, like I'm definitely more desensitized to stuff like that nowadays. But I, there are still moments that get me because One Piece. I've been reading it more recently. And so um, there's a lot of very heartwarming moments that make me cry. Did you get to Robin's story yet? Oh, yeah. I'm on her story right now. And there were definitely tears that happened while reading it. Yep. And so, yeah. Because there's so many great characters that each have stuff that is relatable to about them that, oh, it's so good. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, I'll say this. And I guess this is just me as a person. Uh, Certain things don't make me sad. They make me angry. Like, uh, yeah. it's like, uh, Robin's backstory, like uh, Robin, Nami and, uh, certain backstories of straw hat pirates or like in certain anime things, it doesn't, yeah. people go like, oh, that didn't make you cry. I was like, no, it made me angry. I was like, yeah, fucking kill this person or hurt this person really badly because yeah, that's what I want you to do to this person for yeah, causing yeah, this yeah. pain. It doesn't make me like sad. Like, oh, no, this is so sad. It just makes me like, no, someone get this person. Someone beat the fuck out of this person. And then that happens and I feel better. I'm like, yay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get that catharsis from it, yeah. but not until you experience the emotion mm. and the a rage and, and, and anger. the joy and the pain and sadness and yeah, not so, yeah. sadness, rage. Yeah, there's definitely rage involved in there too. Yeah, but yeah, those are some of anime that have made us emotional, and I'm curious to see what anime have made you guys. Emotional. Yeah, comment down below in the comment section. Let's get Yay. a discussion going. 
Yeah, let's do it. Oh, man, because I've definitely been a wreck over far too many shows. <laughs> but speaking of wreck, uh, segue. Rooms? Jordan, why don't wreck you take room? us to our next question? Okay, this <laughs> comes so from segues. Mike Orgy, big fan. And it says uh, Mike Forgy. Big fan. That's what you call you that's what you said his name was. His name is Mike Forgy. Thank you for yeah, listening. Yeah, I know. Mike. Orgy. Okay, whatever. All right, so <laughs> good for you, man. I like Forgies too. They're fun. Yeah, they're uh, great. Weird <laughs> What is the weirdest convention moment you've had? Oh, oh, this is uh, All right. God, what's your one? Okay. I guess hmm weird Odd. is a word. I'm just going to say some convention moments that are interesting and maybe they'll fit the classification. One time I met this guy and he had like a hentai mask on and sunglasses and he like came up to me when I was working at Bruno Floss's table and he was just like, yeah, I'll play your game. And then he took his oh, mask shit, off. Oh shit, it he was, was me? He was Jordan. And it, it was, was me. It me. It was you. <laughs> but I didn't talk. I just nodded it my was head. You. No, but that was that was <laughs> that was a great moment. That, yeah, was that, that was weird, that was a though? good moment. Um, but like I'm trying to think. Mm, no, I don't think it was weird because I think you know after mm. I figured out it was you, I was like, oh, oh that's fun. Hi, would you like to play this game? Yeah. Would you like to play? Ah, got him. Uh, would nod. you like to play this game? <laughs> yeah. But there have been there have been moments where I've just been like. Whoa, did that just happen? Oh, yeah. So I guess that could be weird. Um, like when I first met Brent, when um, he had invited me to um, to go to, to do some testing for his game with like a bunch of his friends and stuff. That was like a what? That's really cool. And um, it was like almost out of nowhere. And I got to meet all those people. And then me and Brent became friends. And it was really great. And that was like oh, one okay. of those whoa moments. But there were, oh, I'm trying to think. Heck. Oh, man. Uh, back in the day, um, when I first started going to cons, I would memorize the dances, like, to Hair Hair Yukai from Hari Sizumiya and, like, the Lucky mm-hmm. Star Dance. And um, and one time, I was recording myself with my friend. We were uh, doing Hair Hair Yukai, like the da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. And in the middle of recording it, a giant group of Ranma one half <laughs> joined me, and I don't have the I don't have the footage. I don't have it, and it makes me sad because because this was like early. I was like twelve or thirteen, and we, I didn't have a phone. I just we had like one of right. those digital cameras that like you would film, and and I don't even know where that memory card is. But oh my god, it was one of the coolest. Like it was so weird because I loved Ranma one half, and I was just doing the dance, and I just wanted to record it because mm. back in the day, like that was what you did. Like, there was Caramel Dancing, there was Hari Hari Yukai, and they all were in sync with me. And I was like, what is happening? Mm. And it was a beautiful moment. And Oh, nice. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I think those are those are some weird, those are some weird cool moments. And I probably have a bunch more, because I've been going to cons for nice. 10 or more nice. years now. But, yeah, those are, like, okay. some fun ones fun that ones. I thought I of. I know the other route, not fun. Because uh, I've been in the other... Yeah, so there was this... Oh, this no. This is uh, back in 2012 with the first BronyCon, HorseCon, that me, when I met, like, Saber Spark and oh, uh, Paleo and all these other people for the first time. And uh, it was oh, uh, me, Saber Spark, and my friend ZJ, and we decided to go to, like, their dance rave they were having, like, at, um, like a night thing. And yeah. uh, I remember we were dancing, we were having a pretty good time and stuff like that. And we were all a bit like drunk because we went to like the bar and I was like, yeah, having fun. Yeah, having fun. Woo. And um, this girl came up to us and uh, she gave us glow sticks and it was like a broken glow stick. And she was like, yeah, you guys want some? And then she was like, Sarah was like, put it on my face. And it was just like, and then I remember um, this oh person was like, dude, don't put that on your face. I think it's toxic. And he's like, wait, what? And then he's like, start freaking out that like he put like glow stick juice on his face. And I was like laughing. And then I look over at the corner, oh, and no. uh, we were watching Noah King and Living Tombstone tear it up on uh, the stage because they were like doing their thing on stage, and we were like having fun. Oh. And we we're like, yeah, it was awesome. Like they were. What? This was I think I met Jesse briefly then. Like we met officially like in 2014. Like more. That's when we became like yeah. good friends. But like um, during that night. There was this, um, if you know who uh, Vinyl Scratch is, well, if you probably don't, that's a pony character or whatever. So it's, um, yes, yeah, yeah, Jesse know, Wilson. So, I like, imagine Jesse that as a fur suit. There was, like, a fur suit, I guess. And um, it was just hanging out with people, so I didn't think much of it. And then I turned around and I saw the thing, like, staring at me. 
And I thought it was looking at someone else, but it was standing still, yeah. focusing in my direction. And I tried to tell uh, Saber, but he broke that glow stick on his face and rubbed it on his face. But then, like, he was, like, thinking it was poison, so he was freaking out. And uh, so I walk all the way to the oh. back and sit down, and everything seems fine. And then I look up, and 15 feet away is this vinyl scratch, like, cosplayer or fursuiter just staring at me. Oh, my God. Not moving. It was, like, that damn rabbit oh, from no. Donnie Darko. So I, like, I, I get up. I move again, I go to the bathroom. I like I go to the bathroom, do my business, like wipe my hands, you know, do all that stuff. Come out, 15 feet away again, bam, just staring at me through those purple lenses. At this point, I'm starting to get like really freaked out. That's so I try crazy. to find Saber and ZJ and like with this sense of dread, like, oh, we've got to get out of here. And then like we watch um John Delancey get on stage. And then after that, we left and I felt paranoid the yeah. entire way home, like walking back to my thing. And it was just like so, oh. so creepy. And then it was just like, yeah, yeah, I didn't need to happen. And then, of course, like the thing that happened at Dragon Con that I told you about, like when I came down with the people yeah. doing shenanigans in the hotel room <laughs> that was oh yeah <laughs> that was yep. that was odd yep <laughs> and i was just like um i think i should leave now <laughs> like that was just one of the like what happened was uh these people yeah they were doing some special stuff they, like, let's just say that legally like i i had nothing to do with it and yeah, i was just like yeah, okay yeah, yeah but you guys do that and then um something happens where they all like started to get frisky and i was just like you know what I don't want to be a part of this. So I just left. <laughs> yeah. I just, yeah. I think, I think I need to go. Yeah, and yep. Like, and then you came and hang out with upstairs. us. It was like, it was crazy, but yeah, that was one thing. And then there was, was Oh, wild. I guess a weird thing. I stopped the mugging at a con and then that's like a big thing. Yeah. That, Cause I remember like everyone oh. made a big deal of that. Cause I it, actually, if you go look it up online, Jack's Blade stops mugging, you can still see it. But uh, yeah, there was, um, what? it was like an Incredibles moment. From the first movie, because like I was in this hotel room, and I looked down, and I noticed these like two people push this guy into a, a like a alleyway, and they were like jumping him and shit like that. And I was just like, "Dude, that guy's getting jumped. We need to yeah. stop this." And like I like ran down the stairs, and then I was a bit drunk at the time too, so I was like, "Jordan, Jordan." So like someone came with me, oh, and no. I was like, "Whatever," and I was like, "Hey." Hey! And I, like, ran at him. And then, like, they both ran off in separate directions. And the guy who was yeah. getting jumped, he, like, ran off in a separate direction. And I, like, w w walked out, like, huh. Okay, then. And then I walked back in. And then, like, uh, me and my, like, sidekick, Kibby, or whatever, we, like, walked back in. And he was just like, yeah, dude, like, yeah. freaking Jax ran down the stage and jumped in. These guys, like, ran away. And it was, like, crazy. And it was just, like, uh... It, and that was it was hype and then i felt like yeah i i, I stopped something i like yeah. need to protect the city <laughs> and it was that's it was really awesome. awesome but that is like you gotta think, think stupid like if they had a gun they could just went well bam <laughs> or they had a knife or whatever but but i still stopped that guy so oh I feel yeah good. yeah I felt good about that it was fun yeah that's like that could definitely be yeah. classified as like a weird con mm, moment i need to protect these seats oh, <laughs> the yeah. city needs me mm. i must protect oh heck Oh, man. Oh, one thing that's really fun that happens at AWA, which I thought was, like, kind of weird at first, but I was like, oh, this is really cool. There's these people that give out cereal on Saturday night of the con. Like, they're just running around with cereal and milk and, like, coolers for the milk and, and bowls and and uh, spoons. And they're just like, cereal party in the wherever. Yeah, and everybody's just there eating cereal. Like at two in the I, I, I don't trust people who give you food. Oh. Oh, it's I, it's been happening I do not every trust year. People who give it's you food. great. Like, I just don't like because it's one of those things like they That's give you fair, like. But like I did love you it. ever see that Steven Universe <laughs> thing with the needle? They put like needle in the kit. Yeah, that's oh fuck. Yeah, yeah you, told, like, me yeah, you no, told me about you. that. Yeah, no, thank you. Like I, I know what you're. Yeah, it's about choosing your battles for sure. But like with the cereal thing, it's like a tradition at the con. Put rat where, poison in it. <laughs> you know, maybe it isn't the safest thing to do. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. It's been happening for so long that I personally trust that specific thing. But you know, maybe I'll be proven hella wrong. And I'm not saying everybody should take any food they ever get ever. But for this particular thing, it was like a weird thing that I partook in. And it's like a tradition at the con and hundreds of people participate in it. As long and as so it's fun and innocent, it's just like, and there's okay. not like one it's weirdo like, who decides, you know what? Fuck these people. <laughs> We're gonna. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure, and that's very a very valid like possibility, and I'm very thankful it hasn't happened. And it's about trust, you know, choosing your 
like battles and what you trust and stuff. And I don't accept food from anybody that offers you it. Accepted food the cereal for me. thing though, because so many people were doing it. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Do but I, I knew you. Do I? <laughs> Do I? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, those are mm. those are some pretty cool, awesome convention moments, and I'm sure we could think of like 80 mm. billion more, but that might take a while. So why don't we go to our next be your question? question. Yes, it would. Yeah, so that's, I am not yeah, evil from tell Instagram. Thank you it's for your question. I'm something. not evil. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's inter- That's interesting. Right, Joe. In- I'm very doing. interested in in your intentions here, but but let's move forward with I am not evil's question because it's a very cute and fun one. What animal dragon. would you be best suited to fight alongside? Yeah, All right, bitches. You're going to get a dragon? Dude, I want a badass dog. I want, like, a weenie dog that, like, looks innocent, and then it's like, oh, it's so cute, I want to pet it. And then it's like, Rah! and it's like, and it gets it gets huge, and then it, like, defeats you in battle, but then I can cuddle it. That's what okay. I want. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want a dragon. I want a I want a Digimon. So, so, I want a Digimon so you dragon. Think you're, well, yeah. I want well because you know what I prefer Digimon over Pokemon because Digimon, first off they talk and secondly okay. they don't yeah. stay in the form they transformed into. Like you can have a Digimon start off like freaking yeah. Agumon starts off as like you know a pet sized creature and then like when he grows into Greymon who's like yeah. a giant. Like, he doesn't have to stay in that form. He reverts back. So I like that. I like that aspect. So I'd like yeah. a dragon that can turn into, like, a big dragon. <clears throat> It'd be my friends and stuff like that. And that will be awesome. Okay, yeah. I like the transformative nature of, like, my potential animal friend. Like, I'd want them to have, like, maybe, maybe like, a small... You just want princess to be your, like, moment, but then it's like thing. And then, like, she, like, transforms into okay. a giant thing. Maybe and then, that's like, she true. she reverts back to her princess self. Yeah. Yes, I just want that. There I want you go. Her to sit See, on my like, and she can do the thing like Jake, <laughs> where she stretches, where you know she like wraps around, like and coils. Yes. Them, so there you go. <gasps> yes. Oh do my god. That's what I want. Uh, How would you feel if Princess like oh god. you tell like hey, whoa, say. hello? She's like Katie, get the fuck away from me, bitch. I hate your Hello. ass. What the fuck do you talk oh to me this god. way for? And she's just like I... a colossal like bitch, like, the truest. <laughs> I would be so sad. I know, I know that, that would be the case because I think case. about she that because I had a dream a while ago like Rambo could talk. That's my dog. And then like he was just like a spoiled yeah. bastard yeah. and he was talking shit to me. I'm like, well, fuck you. And like I was just like, we got into this argument and it's just like, fuck Give you. Me more Why do you always try to rape you. my leg? Because you want it, bitch. What you say to me, dog? And it was just like stupid. It was just like crazy. Oh my God. Oh man, it was crazy. I can't imagine what Princess would say, but I think, think it would be, be just more aggressive? on the side of like, hello, bring me things. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, yeah. Princess would probably be really passive aggressive. She'd also be very like, she wouldn't say much, but when she did, you would just be like, oh, <laughs> well, I have to be What your one that steals socks be like? He's like, oh, hey, Katie, I'm just going to come. Gosh, I'm just going to run out the house. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what he would do. Because we also have to <laughs> I saw this happen. I remember when this happened. Where we're, me and Katie yes. were in her room. I think we were like on la- our laptops or something like that. He just walked in. Yeah. And like he like grabbed a yeah, bottle yeah. and tried to run outside with it. <laughs> <laughs> yes he just does that every day you have to lock your doors or he will just like pop in <laughs> take something and run like he doesn't care what it is it's usually oh, socks because he likes the chewiness but... <laughs> i like the way katie explained because the first time katie said like oh if you're here just like uh, make sure you close the door because uh my dog he steals socks and so like the way it's just like there's something that's just odd <laughs> when you say like such an asinine thing of like oh it's so it's so mundane what they take but yeah. it's just sort of creepy when you say it like that like make sure you lock the door or he'll steal your socks it's just that just sounds like odd it's just like he'll what? steal your socks that's okay new new strategy guide for battle i want a spirit animal that steals their socks and then to they'll fight. have cold they'll feet. have cold feet to fight <laughs> And they won't. Oh, okay, yeah, and I they won't want to fight. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> It'll be great. He can come into battle with me, and he his magical power is any socks mm-hmm. in the vicinity oh he God. can steal. Like immediately, no matter what their stealth counter is or whatever, he will take those socks, no problem. No matter what their like reflexes are, their dexterity, their socks are going to be got. Okay. <laughs> And that's just okay, a fact good. of life. 
Uh. Yep. This question really does bring up some very interesting, like, topics when you think about it. Because, like, when it comes to, like, fighting alongside an animal, there's a lot of shows that, like, do that stuff. It's like, this is your spirit guide and all that stuff. But, but I don't know. Like, when I think about the way the animals act in those shows, it's like, well, why do yeah. you need a master? Yeah. Go be your own person. <laughs> like, because I'm watching, Oh, like, the slime the, anime is so slime good. slime anime like, right that now. Thing is, and, like, yeah, the elf boobs Oh, it's was so awesome good. Too. It's like so wholesome. That show is like super wholesome. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's so good. Polite. And all the monsters are just like Master Rimuru and like, "Oh, will you give us a name?" And I'm like, it's an interesting like world. But imagine if that's how like the spirit animals That'd were nice. if we had them fight alongside that's us. Nice. Yeah, mm-hmm. they'd be like really polite and wholesome. But I'm just like, "Go be your own person." But also I yes, love and respect you. You're not my you, slave. You're my friend. I don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you're my friendo. Except Princess, she can, like, be my, okay. my cuddle buddy forever, if I've ever. Mm-hmm. I need her. I need her to stay. <laughs> Don't oh, leave God. me, Princess. <laughs> I need you. <laughs> She's so cute. I just want to give her little wings and fiery breath and the ability to grow and sit on enemies. <clears throat> okay. It would be great. I... I, th- I feel like we've yes, we adequately have. answered this question, and I would like to know in the comments below, who would you want your spirit a animal dragon, fighter to be? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> what if it was a dragon dog? That'd be annoying because it can't be eating cows. Y- yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> like, it would be like that movie, uh, Pete's Dragon, the remake. Yeah, that's what it would be like. Uh, yes. But you have the next question. <sighs> Well, why don't you take us no, to I our do. next question? Oh, do I? I have the next question. <gasps> ha! All right, Victory. Jax, can you make a video we on just how totally to cook bugs twisted. to get that protein? Sir Clayton. Technically, I could Ooh. because did you know, Katie, that bugs are actually healthier than eating did meat? Did you know? <laughs> because there are certain, like, grubs and caterpillars that have more protein in a single serving than, like, a drumstick or, like, some lean ground beef or anything like that. And, like, you could wow. get, like, um... Uh, a fucking what was it like some grasshoppers and like eat that and it'd be like healthier th- for you because like, it has no cholesterol it's got all these vitamins and minerals but it's just like the whole thing of like eating bugs people can't do that because you know they want to but you can it's called entomophagy uh, you can do eating bugs that's I actually didn't know like the health benefits to bugs I knew you could eat them like, well you shouldn't go in the safe, bathroom and like grab like... a bunch of like cockroaches or something like that like Katie what are you no, doing no, no. oh my god so, so, <laughs> so like hypothetically so hypothetically you know like if I'm if I'm feeling like oh man I really need like some protein I need to eat some meat I need to go cook up a chicken breast if hypothetically I got like a bunch of cockroaches well not cockroaches and, like, because, I mean like, and, like there are like there's 1900 oh, okay. species of bugs that you can eat that you won't be affected by oh well I okay. mean like I was just naming I'd a random say grasshopper is better Cro- grasshoppers would be better it's like eating jerky okay why are cockroaches well, they eat, bad like, a bunch I guess. of like I'm curious foul shit that's like found in trash and all this other stuff like other bugs eat like um, you know oh. grass and uh, earth and stuff like that like cockroaches yeah they have to have a good diet a lot of fucked up shit like i would never say like eat cockroaches or maggots like you eat mealworms mealworms are fine or like um okay uh, again caterpillars are great uh grubs like you remember from the lion king a grub what's it look like that, that thing actually looked delicious yes. as a kid i'm not gonna lie like that was one of those things when i saw it as a kid i was like I yeah want yeah it looks like a gummy thing. worm i don't know why i want it but i want it yeah like, I want them to make, like, some bug gummies, and I would totally eat them. Which they actually, they had, like, this little thing where it's, like, you would, it's like an Easy Bake Oven, except it was, like, for Oh, yeah, I remember that. I think it was Creepy Crawlers. Yeah, Creepy Crawlers. Yes, That's creepy what it crawlers. was. I mean, that yeah. was fun. That was back in the 90s, kids. Oh, heck. So, okay, so, yeah, if they have a good diet. So, okay, let me rephrase then. If I was like, oh, I really need to eat, like, some protein and stuff. I need to cook up a chicken breast. Oh, but I have, like, this thing of grasshoppers. If I, like, I don't know, how would I cook the grasshoppers I mean, to, you could... to make them into a meal? And if I made them into a meal, would it be as filling and healthy it for me as that chicken breast? Be. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to pretend like I've eaten bugs on a regular basis. Like, because like, I've 
Oh, okay. As a kid, okay. I used to eat a lot of stupid shit. Like that's a whole thing. I used to eat walls. I like I yeah, accidentally yeah, swallowed yeah. The Tamagotchi pet. I ate like so many stretch Armstrongs. Like that is oh, my no. thing. And uh, it's just uh yeah. I mean, it, it, you can like you know do basic things. You can like fry them. You can like bake them. You can do all that shit. But um, of course, uh, it, it it's just okay. the, I think it's just the mindset of getting into like yeah these bugs. Like you can actually get them like cooked at the store because in Mexico I know I have uh, uh, Mexican okay. friends who are saying like um, if you get like uh, crickets or something like that from the store they taste like jerky and they're like a delicacy there so it's just like oh yeah so I guess it oh. really depends so yeah I mean so so like the crickets or like grasshoppers or whatever could be if you like cook them and stuff they could be as filling and healthy as yeah like, and if you were like, like you know in the, the wild and you need to eat something you like grab one and ate a like alive sadly yeah. it would be pretty like nutritious even though it would be disgusting because like when you bite into it, the squirt shit is uh mm. yeah 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 like because i'm because i definitely understand because of like how society like has kind of made us kind of be right. kind of against that I guess because when you when you hear bugs when you ick. think about bugs it's like oh those are gross but like yeah it's just like an icky feeling but if it was normalized like it could yeah probably, years ago it was normalized done with it. and I know I've definitely been but it was that they stopped doing okay. it once we like start growing crops and the insects would like ruin the crops so like they became like associated with like you ruin yeah. the food that we eat instead of being the food we eat. Mm-hmm. yeah. Which in reality, maybe we should figure out how to trap those. Yeah, bugs so exactly. We can make more. Yeah, I know. Food. Like, what I'm worried about is now a bunch of overzealous yeah, yeah, people because yeah. I made a video on this yesterday. Like, they're just gonna be going out, like eating a bunch okay. of flies and cockroaches in their bathroom. But, like, instead of like swatting the fly, like oh, I'm no. gonna swat this fly. Mom, wait! I got it. <laughs> oh God, you need help. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, I think maybe there because it's not something that like is so is commonplace to talk about it would be good before you know you go around eating random bugs to like do a little mm-hmm. research about like you know health and stuff into it because when you think but about it, it centipedes possible, are just really angry candy like, bars if yeah <laughs> <laughs> i never thought of that but it is interesting that there is that nutritional value there it's just something that you don't even think about because of like the potential nausea affiliated with it because i know that i've had People say, like, oh, you want to try, like, a chocolate-covered cockroach? And I would be like, oh, God, no. But, like, and now that you say cockroaches eat dirty stuff, I'd probably still say no. But if there was, like, a chocolate-covered grasshopper or something, like, because I would feel like I would throw up just because my mind mm-hmm. would... You can have caramel caterpillars. Of, like, oh, that's Those nasty. Those are actually, like, kind of good. Okay. Yeah. I, have, I remember I had... You've tried I, them? I, I know the ones I had that when I was a little kid I didn't eat like a rug rat. Uh, it was that and uh, cricket. So yeah, like they taste like jerk. yeah. So like yeah, there's certain things like wow. that you can eat. But I, yeah, it's just a, it's just um, a natural inane icky feeling, innate like icky feeling where you just feel like Ugh, I, I can't do yeah. this. Like if you're like a sane person, but like you know yeah. Yeah. When in reality, it's just as carnivorous. And they're healthier. They they're, meat. they're like more like, protein than them do. and certain yeah. meats. That's interesting. Like, oh, uh, this next time I'm at a place where they have like chocolate covered crickets or something. And if somebody asks I want, if I want to do try it. one, I'm going to do it. I'll bring a whole bunch. Yeah. We, like we can be at a convention and we just be oh, in the God. grass <laughs> cratching crickets eating them. Well, I don't know if I want to do it at a con because I don't want to risk getting nauseous at a con on my costume. But if I'm somewhere well, else and I'm just in normal clothes with me and like, just eating crickets it's like outside in the back, looking like this crazy people. Uh, I weird don't flex. know if I want to do that, Jordan. I will be real. <laughs> the weird flex duo was eating so bugs God. outside. <laughs> like, like maybe if it was like the Sunday of the con, you know, I'm about to go home and it's like. If they're covered in chocolate or what, or they're cooked or something, not just like one off the the ground. Like if mm-hmm. it was like a cooked thing, and I was about to leave the con, mm-hmm. so like I didn't have anything else I had to do, so it'd be okay if I was a little nauseous. Okay. I could I could do it. I could try it. Okay. Yeah. I was curious. <laughs> oh heck. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. So what what other health things do you know um, about, about eating bugs? I, I guess just the fact that they're. Uh, it's easier to get and to be like, I guess, more beneficial for people. I mean, if you want to go that route with it, it like is just there's so many minerals and vitamins in doing them that uh, it would be very beneficial. Just help yeah. your stomach. It, I mean, 
again, it's, it's, it's a very foreign concept, but that, that's pretty much my whole thing. It's just like, yeah, maybe try, try some, you know, go out, see what they taste like. Just don't get the ones that bite and fuck up yeah, your tongue. Yeah, but do research, I guess, first. Yeah, like, do research. Well, yeah, like, like you know, there are various or, like, videos on like, yeah. YouTube on how to prepare them. You just, like, fry them or, like, you put them in a thing and then that's how yeah. they go. Yeah. Oh, man, that mm, would be interesting be if that really was, like, weird. the next craze. Like, Ugh. the next big thing. That'd be weird. <laughs> but, yeah, I guess we pretty much covered that one. I will go the to our question. next question. And now you guys know... A yes. little bit more about eating bugs, I guess. <laughs> Bug peanuts. Fun place to take it. But yeah, this next question was sent to us through our email. Thank you so much. Weirdflexbutokaypodcast at gmail.com. And it is from Easy Ed. Booyah. And I will read this to you. It says, hi. Yes, it says booyah. It says, hi, Connie. This question is for you. How are you so positive about stuff? I want to change the way I am. I wake up grumpy. And sometimes I feel really negative and dark. And also, you guys are awesome and motivating to listen to, especially Aww. like Jackson stuff. Jeez. I kind of butchered it Sweet a little bit. Kid. But, but yeah, I think that's a fun question to to bring forward, just about how to stay positive. Because I know, I know my answers Rainbow are generally and very like, rainbowy and bubbly and, flowers and like and flowers. <laughs> and <laughs> and like and there is some truth to that in that like um i do feel that way a lot of the time but i've definitely experienced like dark moments and i do have anxiety i do have ocd i have um had to go to therapy before for issues in my life but i still have been able to find a way to be optimistic but also realistic as well and i think it all it comes down to consistency and repetition in your life and i'm very fortunate that um, I, I've exposed myself to a lot of media that is positive and I surround myself with people that also are able to speak positive and being around positivity or just seeking out positivity will bring more positivity into your life. And I try to look at it from a realistic perspective of, um, hope is realistic in terms of as a species, we need hope to survive. We need to think there's something good and that there's something better in order to keep going. And that is valid. And so holding on to that and understanding that there will be bad times that are unavoidable. But there will be good times that are also unavoidable. So understanding that there is a balance. And sometimes it might feel out of whack. Like, because right now I'm definitely having more of a negative balance right now. And I've been going through a lot of stuff. But I'm able to say, hey, I also in my life have experienced amazing, awesome stuff. And I have people that love me. And I know these things to be true because no matter what, the bad times will end and the good times will come just like the good times will end and the bad times will come. And if you keep that perspective, it lets me keep going and having a positive attitude about it because you just suck it up and it's inevitable. To say that positivity is realistic, I think is something that I hold very dear to me because generally when people say I'm a realist, they're using it I like as an to be excuse sad. to say shitty things happen, and that's just how no, it no, is. No, no, I'm saying, like, I'm agreeing with you. Huh? People are like, I'm a realist. I like to be, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you so happy all the time? Like, I hate people like that. Yeah, yeah, and, like, and it's not to say that realism can't involve negativity. That's exactly my point. There will be bad times, and there will realistically be good times. And perspective can be very important in that too and like sometimes something could be happening that one person will perceive mm -hmm. as bad and one person will perceive as good and it's just trying to keep that hope no sorry mind. my freaking i don't know what the oh my gosh uh. no but yeah i guess i pretty much summed it up it's just like trying to apply realistic hope into your life and understanding that there will be negative times but that there will be positive times so that when you're moving forward through the negative you have something to look forward mm -hmm. to and even when it's hard to see it just just force yourself to get up and say right. what's the next thing that I can do what can I do right now and sometimes that's hard for me to do but I always end up finding my way back to it because that's just how life will be it's it's valid and realistic to say even though things suck right now 
it can and will get better if I keep pushing through this. If I keep I'm so actively... sorry about that. I don't know why my, oh my thing God. keeps going. No, it's fine. Like keep no. going, Katie. You're in like your great term. Okay. Yeah, I know. Don't, don't worry. That was just strike. something that Heck. happened. Like, I have no... <laughs> Ignore that people. The TV like downstairs went off as my Yeah. Ignore the TV. But yeah, that's yeah, I guess that's a pretty good note to end my perspective. Yes, I do have a perspective. Do you have a so perspective like people there? I am very positive for stuff I like. Okay, for instance, that like I notice a lot of people are just yeah. upset and negative about stuff that they do. Like there are people who get upset like, Oh, I can't believe this happened. Why don't they do this with this? Why doesn't they do this with this? And it's just like I can't take that level of negativity. Alright, first off so um Paleo and uh my friend here, yeah. Sashi and Saber Spark, they always make fun of me for this, but I don't like watching uh, negative stuff or like sad stuff or like um, stuff that makes you feel, like it makes you go on feels. Your Kate yeah. knows this too, where I'm just like, I don't want to feel with this because it's just like, I've had yeah. a sad, def- fucked up, you know, life in times like that. I've had life where I'm just, um, you know, I feel down about myself. I don't feel uh, good. I, I, I don't like this. I've been yeah. beaten. I've been like made fun of. I've been like heartbroken and I don't want to focus on that. Life is like, you're only on the planet for like what, a hundred years. So it's just like, you want to like enjoy the time. And so people, people yeah. focus on the negative stuff in their life. And it's just like, no, you got to appreciate the good stuff. Yeah. I love tasty food. I love my dog. I love my family. I love yeah. my friends. Katie's pretty cool. I like hanging with her. I like boobs. I like Jordan's butts. Cool. I like anime. I like titties. I like <laughs> cartoons. I like animation. You know, there's stuff that I genuinely love in this world. I love doing my YouTube channel. I love the fact that I don't have to go to a job that I hated like Burger King when I worked at that for six years. I did not like working there, but I can appreciate now yeah. because like that's the thing about going through harsh times when you go through harsh times and you're in good times you could appreciate it more because it's like i know how hard it was and now i'm appreciating this but like if i just see so many people just negative and complaining about certain things that like aren't even that big a deal i just i can't stand it and i don't want to be a part of it like there are people i know where it's just like oh i'm upset about this thing i'm just like really that small thing is making you act this way and like complain online like can you get the fuck out of my feed with it i'm just gonna go off right now katie i'm just gonna go off yeah. because it's just like ridiculous oh, no. i'm with I you see i'm with you all this pessimism negative like oh i'm just being realist okay like the way i look at it for me i'm an optimistic realist okay there are certain things i know that's not gonna go well but i can like look yeah. at them logically and real realistically and be like okay yeah this isn't you know that big a deal and it's fun like uh, for instance um i love my dragon ball fans but a lot of dragon ball fans are just so overly yeah. serious about a show about monkey alien bodybuilders who blow up planets and it's just like why are you taking this serious like yeah. for instance um a lot of people online are just always looking for a fight because they know like it, uh, they can get away with it online they can say something whatever like i remember i posted um yeah someone posted a clip they tagged me in and i was like oh my god that would have made this movie 10 times better to me personally so i always say to me and personally and in my opinion because this is how it personally affects me and so yeah. like don't tell me you're serious that is just absolutely horrible and stuff like that and i responded with a laughing gif and then someone was like wow oh what a comeback you must be absolutely great and free Freaking debates you are just the ultimate epitome and i was just like um a i was literally oh posted a comment that i enjoyed this for myself i didn't call you out or call anyone else out. i just posted my personal enjoyment you are now antagonizing me by sending me this stuff that i didn't respond to you cannot change my mind on this and i am not trying to change your mind on how you feel so you can literally just not message me and you stay in your turf, I'll stay in my turf, we don't have to deal with each other, all right? Simple as fuck. And it's just, people are just so inclined to be like, I want to, yeah. you know, go out and start this. And the guy was like, oh, I just wanted to start a debate. I just wanted to, you know, troll online. It's just like, whatever. And that's like, I see, I have no yeah. patience for that bullshit now, Katie. Like, I legitimately, like, some people will say like, oh, yeah. well, if you block them, you lose or something like that. Or like, but thank God for the mute button because it's just there. But it's just like, um, and you, sometimes you yeah. notice this too. The people who get blocked or the people who get muted, they're the ones who get more butt hurt than the people who did the blocking. It's just like, oh, I can't believe they blocked me. Oh, well. And they try yeah, to play yeah. it like um, a badge where like they show like, huh, got him. When it shows like, oh, this person blocked me. <laughs> Guess I yeah. got them. And it's just like, you're a fucking yeah. child. That's what you're doing. It's just like, it's really petty. And yeah. I don't want you in my life. Like, I, 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 this is this is something where I just go like, yeah. all right, 
This is, you're trying to play with me in a certain way. I don't want to play. I generally, I don't want to play this way. I want to live my best life and be positive. This is why I like this. This makes me feel good. This yeah. makes me feel great. Like, I, I don't, I'm not the type of person to bring down anyone for, like, having joy. Like, I hate fuckers who bring down, I'm sorry for swearing people, but I, I'm in a passionate now. I got the passion fire flowing nah. in me. And it's just like, I hate when people... <laughs> Are like yeah. super happy about something coming out. Like, oh my god, I didn't know this was coming out. I'm so super happy for it. It's like, why are you excited for this bullshit? What the fuck's wrong? They're like, shut the fuck up. I di- wasn't asking you. I want to enjoy yeah. this. Just like, like, or like when you say like, for instance, if me and Katie say like, oh man, yeah. we really love Whataburger. Whataburger's good. It's like, and someone just comes along like, oh, I hate Whataburger. That shit is gross. Yeah. It's like, you know, I didn't ask you. Why are you putting that in? Where, where did that come from? We didn't ask like, we for just you. we're saying like, we didn't say. Because there are certain ways to put something out there where you go, like, uh, th- this could be, yeah. like, um, inviting, like, uh, a fight or something like that. And it's just like, um, this is the best burger I've ever had in my life. No, this is nothing com- compared to it. If you're saying that, then you're sim- in- instigating, oh, yeah, people are going to come at you and say something like that. Yeah. Like, there's definitely context it, in ways mm-hmm. that you can put stuff out there. And especially... With social media, when you're trading anything out there, Mm -hmm. people can take it as an invite to be negative or to be positive. And for some of that, I get it. But for some of it, I'm also just like, fuck you. And so, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's just like, like, okay, for instance, like, if me and Katie are just having a conversation online and someone's just like, I don't. Okay, for instance, um, like, if I said something the other day to, like, uh, Katie... Or, like, uh, she posted something like, uh, oh, wow, this is, like, my aesthetic right here. And it was, like, um, her, it was like the sandwich called the threesome. <laughs> and then, like, I made a joke saying, like, uh, oh, yeah, that's what those DMs <laughs> are saying, whatever. And then, like, someone messaged me, like, I don't think you should talk to Katie that way or something like that. And it's just, like, we're friends. We know each other. If she ever felt this way, Whoa. she could tell me. Yeah, we would talk about yeah, it. And would, I would, like, would stop immediately it. because yeah. we care about each other. We care about each other's, like, like you know how we feel or something like that i've never if yeah, i, I yeah, ever yeah. Cause, so... yeah it's about establishing those boundaries and establishing the context in order for how you talk to people because the way that you talk to one person might not be the way you can talk to other people and it takes time and energy and context of built relationships to be able yeah, to talk to certain me and katie have this way. thing where like, i remember the first time like yeah. i feel like we would get nervous if we like felt like we yeah. insulted each other because like i remember um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the whole thing with yes. the freckles thing i like i posted a, a random tweet. like here's a fun story between yes. me and katie guys so i posted a, a tweet like because yeah, me and my friends yeah. were talking about uh people with freckles and like i think people with freckles are cute and then katie commented like uh look bitch you're calling me out again like this that and we didn't we only knew each other for a month me out. and so like yeah, i, yeah, I yeah. dm'd her and i was just like hey um i'm sorry yeah. if I, I did something like i didn't mean to do that and- yeah and immediately i also responded with oh my gosh i'm sorry that i called you a bitch i was just joking mm-hmm. i was trying to be hyperbolic and i know you weren't actually yeah. calling me out so we were both like apologizing to each other because we were afraid we had crossed like some social barrier yeah. but it turns out we were both comfortable but that is something to keep in mind like sometimes it could be crossing a social barrier yeah cuz now we're just like bitch you're that. fucking great i love you and that's why i wouldn't <laughs> bitch yeah 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 and so it's important to keep in mind you know before you say certain things to certain people you know what your relationship is and sometimes you mm. can test those waters but sometimes you shouldn't and because of how the conversations had been going with me and jordan we both felt a comfortability in terms of that and we're able mm. to have that conversation and it turned out fine but sometimes yeah it's good to be aware and so we were able to through communication and like being aware of like our situations and stuff have like a camaraderie that was developed and that's what's important to understand about relationships is there can be so much contextual stuff that goes into it like you're the level of closeness you are with one person you might have stuff that is okay that you guys say to each other or do or whatever but like with somebody else even if you feel close to them they might not have that same boundary and sometimes boundaries can be you know discussed through talking or sometimes it's something that you just feel out with people it's not there's not a completely black or white way to really do that but in terms of like Mm -hmm. putting it on paper per se but it's just about empathizing like empathizing with people and making sure that you're thinking of their feelings before your own and understanding um yeah and just having kind of that understanding and trying to make sure that you never put more out that is being given when it comes to creating those relationships. And then eventually, 
you'll have like a relationship that works. Yeah, yeah someone, I think someone made like a sly comment a about it. Way. And I was just like, dude, we're friends. Like, I, yeah. I don't like when people try to get offended for other people who aren't offended. <laughs> like that shit annoys yeah, me to no end. Like, um, like if you have like a certain friend who's like, uh, there's something about them that's, you know, like unique or like they're black, they're white, they're Asian, they're lesbian, they're gay, they're trans or something like that. But you have like a friendship where you like, you know, have this back and forth and it's not like insulting anyone else or anything like that. But it's just like a, th- th- a little thing back with them. And it's just like, oh, OK, we're cool with each other. But like if someone else is like, yeah. oh, well, I find that offensive that you said. And it's just like, I'm not talking to you, boy or girl. Shut your fucking mouth. I'm <laughs> yeah. And I definitely can understand and it can be valid if you say like certain things in front of other people that they could find offensive in terms of like racial or uh or gender or certain types of jokes where it's like yeah if you two mm-hmm. are alone and you know you're talking it's like fine but oh, yeah, sometimes with social internet, with the social twist internet something i can't understand bad, back and forth yes. They'll, like, oh, uh... yes yes so i can understand certain perspectives about if you say certain things that are okay mm-hmm. in your small group Bitch. you know whatever if you know people are comfortable and understand but there can no. be a lot of nuance there as well and that's why Generally, like I take the side of like, yeah. Well, that's I not say cool to if me, says like, if that. I want to say but, um, bitch, but I'm yeah. saying it in like a fun way, and I'm not saying it like yeah, in a yeah, derogatory yeah, yeah, yeah. way, like towards women. Yes. And it's just like, oh, whatever. Well, I can't do this and shit like that. And it's just like, no, that is a fun word. I like yeah. saying it. To, I'm not saying it to offend you. I'm saying it to yeah. my friend because he acting like a bitch right now. Yeah. Like that's I'm saying. Yeah, and it's, like, about establishing those comfortabilities and those boundaries with each other, for sure. And, like, for some people, it might be, like, you shouldn't say that to them. And that's valid if they're, like, hey, that's not cool. You don't do this or say that around me. Like, you know, it's not being, like, a pussy. What'd you call me? SJW or whatever. What'd you say to me? SJW, Katie? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Okay, I see what you're doing now. I, I, this is what I do on the stage. It means you're a a super (laughs) wonderful jolly welcoming super jolly <laughs> person <You're> super jolly wig <laughs> yes. that's so bad <laughs> but yeah it's yeah there's lots of conversations and like there's not like a perfect i'm not some queen of morality that can tell you what the best way to do whatever is but i can tell from like my experiences and how mm-hmm. to be comfortable with people uh-huh. and like establish boundaries and stuff and it's just important to keep in mind stuff like that when when going forward and when you see other people having conversations that aren't necessarily for you or like saying a word that you're not supposed to be saying that doesn't mean that it's wrong and that you should be entitled to be able to say these certain words or do whatever it just means like that's yeah their relationship. she's just saying the name monica and what did you think she said what are you talking about? I remember Katie used to oh do this all God. at cons and stuff like that. She didn't know. And I, it was so funny. Oh, no. <laughs> he was so mean. He pulled it on me and Casey. And we were like, what does that mean? And then, like, we got it. And I was we just like, because like, I went up to Baca. Katie. And I was just like, why do you, like, black people always say the name Monica a lot? You know? And she's like, Monica? And I was like, what'd you call me? And she's just like, oh. <laughs> Because <laughs> Katie like, kept what? saying Monica for some reason. I don't know why you, you kept saying it when we were at Anime Expo. You... I think Casey was doing it too. Like me and Casey were going back and forth. No, no, because you were saying it before and that's why I brought it up. Because you kept saying something about Monica. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, but you, you were saying it. it that's why I brought it up because okay. you said something about Monica. And I was just like. Oh, oh maybe, okay. I, maybe I had a friend. I don't know. It was an Anime Monica Expo. Monica or something. And like. Yeah, and then you made the joke, and then, like, Monica. me and Casey were like, what, Monica. what? Yeah. You know damn well what, what it means. What does that mean? So now yeah. that you're saying it, I'm looking at you sideways, <laughs> missy. <laughs> no! <laughs> it's just like, you're talking oh, to your God. friend Monica when she shows up. It's just like, oh, yeah, you know, we just got to Monica, oh, no. what's up? And all the black people just look at you. <laughs> Topic has taken a turn. Yeah, that's but how yeah, we stay positive. positive. Learn from I guess. example of this. Positivity. This is what we do. Mm. Yes, this is this, this is how, is we, do how we do it. But yeah, do you do you have another uh, question well, for us, Jordan, we'll or was that our well, last we did, one? We did this, we did that, we did this, we did that, we did this, and then we did that. And then we did what, that. What? what? It was our last question. I think that was our last oh question. Oh my God, it was our last question. But anyways, to sum no. it up, the way I stay positive is I remember the top 10 things that make me happy. So anime, cartoons, 
animation friends family Yay. puppies boobs butts Do anime titties all that stuff deer. and uh you know my youtube channel <laughs> grateful for my life grateful to be alive um i'm happy like the thing yep. is like also i forgot to mention this it's a level of just massive indifference to certain things because like i notice a lot of people get bent out yeah. of shape and they post online all this like stressful stuff about like stuff that's like when it gets down to it is like very little and petty stuff and i'm just like okay i i know this is affecting you that way but it's not affecting me that way and i don't want you to try and make it affect me that way so deuces bruh so like that's why i always like yeah i'm very like i'm very indifferent things like it takes a lot to make me go okay yeah this is a serious thing you don't talk about it you don't do this like i am very very indifferent like that is my just personality thing there it takes a lot like i look at things like okay that is a serious thing that has to be taken seriously you shouldn't make fun of that you shouldn't do anything with that or whatever but if it's just something like you know yeah oh god my this person was being mean to me and i can't believe they're being mean to me and i'm just like you know, don't talk to them and then it's just like yeah. well, well if they're, like here here's a better way to put it if the person if the situation is something that could be easily rectified and someone's mentioned to you that it could be easily rectified and you choose not to go that way that it could be easily rectified, then that's where I'm just like, all right, yeah. that's on you, buddy. So, you know, you do whatever you got to do. But that's the way I stay so positive is I just focus yeah, on myself yeah, yeah. and loved ones and nothing else. Yeah. Well, I think that is a good way to end today's episode. We talked about a lot of silly stuff. We had a lot of fun. And, you can find yeah, me Jordan, where can they find you? Blade. You can find me on Twitter at Jack's Blade Fitness. You can find me at Facebook at Jordan Jack's Blade Downs. You can find me at the Weird Flex, but okay, podcast at gmail.com. You can find me at SoundCloud, Weird Flex, but okay, podcast. And you can also find me Yay. uh Tune Clash. Tune yes, Clash. yes, you I do, do other, other podcasts. podcasts. Tune Clash, we just finished up the final matchup of the... Um, well, we finished recording the entire series in general, so that's going to be fun when we upload those episodes. And then um, we're going to be doing the Nickelodeon tune bracket soon, so that'll be fun to do. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Hope you guys like it and definitely check it out and you know, uh, subscribe to our channel. And where can they find you, Miss Connie Day? You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Connie Day Official or Connie Day Cosplay. You can also find us um, on the YouTube at Weird Flex Breaking Podcast Gmail.com. You can also find uh, my work on Dr. Crafty on YouTube. We just started our new season of episodes with a, with a new episode of the Care Cafe and of the Dr. Crafty Show, so go check that out. And of course, Kruby Productions, Hair WBY Productions, where we are making awesome Ruby content all the time. It's really great. We have an abridged series. We have like talks we have streams we do so much stuff go check those out and then yeah follow me on social media for memes and stuff specifically like, let's memes go right man <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that was my that isabel, was my idea for isabel. <laughs> it, it's true well oh and there was another sketch that well, i said one? jordan should do that maybe he'll do one day the one about like oh yeah yeah that's funny that'd be fun. yeah, yeah it was don't spoil it don't spoil it don't spoil it patent pending that would be so fun but pen pending but yeah thank you guys so much for listening we hope you had a wonderful time listening to our podcast and it definitely makes me feel good to know that somebody's getting a little something out of this because it mm-hmm. definitely is fun for me yes i have yeah, always Jordan. always fun talking to crab day over here so it's good mm-hmm. crab day i have fun talking to yes, jack sword and crab sword. Day. the best of friends <laughs> yay <laughs> <laughs> It's the best friends forever, best friends yeah. forever. Ding. <laughs> yeah. Well, have good a good, night. good time, everybody. Peace out.